Dear viewers, welcome back to my channel and MLS HCPI Crash Course Video Lecture Series. Today we will discuss the quality control in blood bank for the reagents and blood components. Quality in blood transfusion service. In blood transfusion service, the primary goal of quality uh, is transfusion of safe unit of blood. The quality system deals with all aspects to ensure that the product or safe unit of blood is safe as possible. Objectives of the quality in blood bank to ensure the availability of a sufficient supply of blood, blood components of high quality with maximum efficacy and with minimum risk to both donors and patients to determine problems in the whole transfusion chain and solid to achieve the goals. So why the need of uh, quality in blood bank? A failure in the quality of blood collected or screening of donated blood unit can be very serious and may result in fatal consequences. Failure to identify the patient correctly, wrong sample labeling, mix up results among different patients, failure to detect presence of an abnormality in the patient sample and issue of the unscreened blood due to the clerical or technical errors are one of the most recent uh, happened in blood bank and which compromise the quality of our blood bank services. Today we will discuss uh, the two uh, topics, uh, 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 the quality control for the reagents and the quality control uh, for the blood components. Let's start uh, from the quality control for the reagents. The primary objective of a reagent quality control is to ensure the reagent is functioning as expected. Quality control for the reagents. All reagents should be clearly labeled with batch number, expiry date and storage temperature. Instruction for use should be in form of SOPs with training. All reagent and kit should be used according to the manufacturer's instructions. FIFO rule should be applied, uh, FIFO stand for the first uh, in and first out and this should be applied on both the reagents as well as on the blood components. To ensure the quality of the reagent we use positive and negative controls should be done with each batch to show that the reagents are potent and specific. All reagent must be carefully stored at recommended temperature. Reagent uh, to be kept at 4 to 6 Celsius should never be frozen and are stored according to the manufacturer's instructions only. Supply, storage and transportation of kits and reagent should be strictly standardized as per the manufacturer instructions. Let's have a look on the log uh, sheets of the reagents. So basically the log uh, sheets we use for the reagent records uh, should include the name of each reagent with the lot number, batch number, expiry date, name of the manufacturer and date of recept and put in use. Frequency of quality control of the reagent. Anti-human serum should be checked each day of use. Blood grouping serum uh, is also each day of use. Antibody screening and reverse grouping cells also be checked each day of use. But for the enzymes, uh, check is required with each run. And normal saline, lys and phosphate buffer saline and bovine albumin also required a check on each day of use. Quality control of reagent red blood cells. For the appearance, there should be no hemolysis or turbidity in the supernatant by visual inspection and this should be done each day. For the reactivity and specificity, test the positive reaction with non sera and against red blood cells antigen and this should be done each day. Quality control of ABO reagent NTA, NTB and NTAB. For the appearance, there should be no turbidity, precipitation, particles or gel formation by visual inspection and this should be done each day. For the specificity, positive reaction with red cells having the corresponding antigens and no reaction with negative control and this should be done daily uh, and with the new uh, lot batch. This means that we will test the uh, cells uh, and there should be a positive reaction and with O cells or uh, blood group O there should be no reaction. For the potency uh, we must uh, test the undiluted serum and uh, it must give us a 3 positive reaction in saline tube testing using a 3% red cells suspension at, ro uh, at room temperature and this should be done with each new lot or batch and we normally call uh, this uh, lot to lot verification. Let's now talk about the acceptable titer and ABO reagents. For the anti-sera A, if we are using the polyclonal or monoclonal reagents, 
uh, we will test against the uh, 2 to 3 percent of A cells and the reactivity should be uh, of the titer uh, at least 1 ratio to 56 for the reagent uh, NTB or NTSERA NTB if we are using this polyclonal or monoclonal we will test against the 2 to 3 percent of B cells uh, and the required titer is 1 ratio 256 for the NTAB if we are using this reagents uh, polyclonal or monoclonal we will test against the 2 to 3 percent sub AB cells and the required titer is 256. Uh, B uh, note that they, these titers are very important uh, uh, as uh, for the examination. Quality acceptable of RH NTSERA or NTD. For the appearance, there should be no turbidity, precipitation, particles or gel formation by visual inspection and this should be done each day. For the specificity, positive reaction with R1, R cells are non depositive cells and this should be done, done with each day and each new lot or batch purification and there should be uh, there should be a positive reaction with RHD positive cells and there should be a negative reaction with the RHT negative cells. For the potency, we will test the undiluted serum and it must give us three, at least three uh, plus uh, reactions and designated tests for each serum. And for the titer, there should be a titer uh, between 32 to 64 for NTD. The QC of the reagents in blood bank differ from other sections like chemistry and hematology where in each shift of 8 hours QC is required but in blood bank it's, uh, it is required once in 24 hours. Acceptable quality of anti-globin gel or beads reagents. For the appearance there should be no precipitate particles or gel formation by visual inspection and this should be done each day. For the reactivity and specificity, no prozone phenomena, no hemolysis or agglutination of unsensitized red cells, agglutination of red cells sensitized with NTD serum and this should be done also each day and required a lot to lot verification. Let's now have a look on the quality control in blood and blood components. So frequency of testing 1% of component or 4 units per month. Uh, are one percent of all units whichever is more shall be tested for quality control out of which 75 percent shall match the acceptable ranges as per guidelines set by American Association of Blood and Biotherapies. In component, in component QC we will look for volume, cell count, factor concentrates as well as the, the sterility by culture testing. Let's now talk about the QC of the components. So for the red blood cells or packed cells, the HCT should be 80% uh, uh, but not more than 80%. So 80% is ba basically a maximum uh, number. If we store this in uh, 1 to 6 Celsius in closed system uh, by using the CPD anticoagulant, then the expiry is 21 days. But if the CPDA1 anticoagulant is used, then the expiry is 35 days. And if the additive solution is used, then the expiry is 42 days. But if uh, the RBC is in the open system and uh, the storage is 1 to 6 Celsius, then the expiry is 24 hours. For the leukoreduced cells, the 85% of the original cells must retain and there should be a less than 5 uh, multiplied by 10 to the power 6 uh, leukocyte count in the 95% units we, uh, which we test in the QC. The storage is same as per the PRBC 1 to uh, 6 Celsius. For the frozen red cells, uh, more than 85% of the original red cells must uh, re uh, retain in the blood bank uh, after the removal of the cryoprotective agents such as glycerol. We can store these RBCs for the 10 years if, if we store uh, at the temperature of minus uh, 65 Celsius or colder then we will use the 40% glycerol but if we want to store it uh, at temperature minus 120 Celsius then 20% glycerol will be needed and uh, if we uh, deglycerolize these units uh, then the expiry is 24 hours. For the fresh uh, frozen plasma uh, we will store it uh, at minus 18 Celsius and we will collect the plasma from the whole blood within 6 to 8 hours and the storage is uh, uh, 12 months if we store it uh, less than or equal minus 18 Celsius. For the cryoprecipitated antihemophilic uh, uh, factor, there should be uh, more than 80 international unit 
uh, in per unit of the uh, of the FFP. So if we use in pooling four to five uh, units, uh, then we will uh, test uh, the in, in the uh, factor eight in each unit and will multiply it to the number we use in the component. And there should be at least uh, or more than uh, 150 milligram of fibrinogen and the expiry is same one year uh, when we store it uh, at the temperature of minus 18 Celsius. For the plant it's single donor uh, closed system if we collect the donor uh, from a single person uh, not by the apparatus then there should be more than 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 10 planets uh, in per unit and 90 percent unit tested pH should be 6.2 or greater in 90 percent units tested at maximum storage the expiry is about 5 days and we will store it uh, between 20 to 24 celsius with constant agitation for the platelet open system the criteria is same but when we pool uh, these products then the expiry is uh, 4 hours after after the uh, pooling and the uh, uh, storage temperature should be between 20 to 24 celsius with continuous agitation for the platelets uh, leuco reduced they are also uh, uh, there must be a count of more than 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 10 units uh, platelets units in 75 percent of the unit tested and less than 8.3 multi, uh, 8, uh, multiplied by 10 to the power uh, 5 leukocyte in 95 percent of the unit tested and less than uh, 5 multiplied by 10 to the power 8 leukocytes in pooled platelets. For the platelet apparatus if we are using the apparatus instrument then the platelets count should be more than 3.0 multiplied by 10 to the power 11 platelets in 75 percent of the unit tested and pH should be 6.2 or greater and the expiry is same 5 days and the storage temperature is 20 to 24 celsius with constant agitation. For the granulocyte apparatus there should be a count of more than 1.0 multi, uh, multiply by 10 to the power 11 granulocyte count and 75 per, uh, 75 uh, 75 percent units testing and the expiry is uh, 24 hour and the recommended storage temperature is 20 to 24 celsius in order to enhance the quality in the bank we must do the appropriate uh, labeling which contain the unique identification number abo and rh type date of collection and expiry, transf uh, transfusion, transmissible infections, uh, screening sticker and volume of the component.